I'm Emma, a Senior Developer Relations Engineer on the Angular team. And I'm Alex, the technical lead for the core Angular framework. And today, we're going to develop our first app with Angular Signals. Let's get started. Angular Signals introduce three reactive primitives to the Angular that you know and love, simplifying your development and helping you build faster apps by default. But Alex, what is a reactive primitive? And why should we care? Primitives are the building blocks the framework gives you to build applications. Angular's getting some new reactive primitives, which you can use to tell the framework about what data your UI cares about and when that data changes. With that kind of information, Angular can easily keep your application's UI in sync with that data as it changes. Our three new reactive primitives are writable signals, computed signals, and effects. I think that the best way to understand those Angular signals is to start building with them. Today, we're going to start by building a game powered by signals. Oh, that's a great idea. Games have a lot of state, so I'm sure we can find some places to use signals. I think we can. We'll be building an Angular Cypher game. Ciphers are systems for encrypting and decrypting data. In this game, users can decode a secret message by dragging and dropping clues to solve a cipher. And you can even customize your own message and share the URL with your friends to send your own secret messages. Everything you need to follow along to this workshop is in the description box below. To get started, make a fork of the stack blitz to create your own editable workspace. You can pause the workshop and play with the code a little. Unpause and join us when you're ready to define your first signal. Step one, defining our first signal. So Alex, what is a signal? A signal is kind of like a variable. It holds a value for us, and we can change that value whenever we'd like. Unlike a variable, though, a signal knows where in the application it's used like which components are displaying its value in their templates. And it can signal to those components whenever we change the value inside. Very cool. In our app, a great candidate to become our very first signal is the super secret message. Super secret message is a value in message service that defines the secret message that we're decoding. Currently, this value doesn't notify the application of changes, so our customize button is a little bit broken. We can solve this by making it a signal. By making super secret message a signal, we make it so that any dependencies on it can be notified whenever we customize the message in a dialog. You can find each of these places under the comments that say, to do one, define your first signal. Doing this will automatically prompt you to import signal from Angular Core. And if you try to refresh the page at this point, you'll likely run into errors where you previously referred to super secret message. This is because we've changed its type from a string to a writable signal, which is a function. And we can fix these by changing all of the references of super secret message to call that function instead. We have two other signals in our application. The Cypher service defines a Cypher signal. This is a randomly generated mapping of key value pairs of one letter of the alphabet to a new ciphered letter. We use this to scramble the message and to determine if we found a successful match for a letter on the keyboard. We also have a decoded Cypher signal of the key value pairs that we've successfully decoded. And we'll add to that as we solve the cipher. A unique and powerful feature of Angular's signals library is that we're introducing reactivity everywhere. We've defined these three signals once in our services, 
And we can use them in our templates, components, in other services, basically anywhere you can write application code. They're not limited to or bound to a single component. And there you go, your first signal. You can pause the workshop and play with the code a little, and then unpause and join us when you're ready to define your first computed. Step two, defining our first computed. So Alex, you mentioned something about writable and non-writable signals. What's a computed? Ah, computeds. Well, some signals we want to change directly, but that's not always the easiest way to do things. If I know the temperature in Celsius, I can always calculate it in Fahrenheit, but it'd be nice to not have to do that manually. Computed signals also hold values, but instead of changing them directly, they derive their values from the values of other signals. And because signals can notify consumers when they change, computed signals are automatically kept up to date without us having to set them ourselves. In our app, a great candidate to become our very first computed is Solved Message. Solved Message is the in-progress result of decoding the secret message with the decoded cipher key. Currently, the Solved Message doesn't change whenever the secret message changes, so we don't see any updates on the screen when we solve our cipher. Using a computed is going to fix this problem. Rather than having to manually redecode the message every time the user drags a new letter into their key, we can use a computed to automatically keep the solved message up to date as the key changes. And when you first use a computed, you'll be prompted to import it from the Angular core package. If you try and refresh the page here, you'll run into errors where you previously referred to solved message. Just like with the writable signals, we've changed the type of solved message. So we can fix this by changing all of those references to call it instead as a function. Just like decoded message, Secret message is also a great candidate for a computed. This is the super secret message encoded by our cipher that will work to solve and display to users. And lastly, the cipher service defines an unsolved alphabet computed, which calculates a list of all the letters which are not yet solved. This is derived from the decoded cipher. Awesome. We can now verify that our app works. You can pause the workshop and play with the code or decipher your own message, and then unpause and join us when you're ready to define your very first effect. Step three. So I get signals and I get computed derived on signals, but what's an effect? Effects are the last piece of the signal puzzle. An effect is something you want to have happen whenever some signals change. With the effect API, we can tell Angular to run a function which is going to use the values of some signals, and Angular will take care of automatically rerunning that function if those signals are updated. I have something that I want to occur when a signal is updated, confetti. Now that our application is functional, we'll add some fun to it by adding confetti when the cipher is solved and the secret message is decoded. Notice how this effect depends on a signal and on a computed value, the super secret message and the solved message. And when these messages match, we get confetti. Whoa, 
I didn't realize effects worked in real life. <laughs> you can pause the workshop and play with the code a little. Uh, we'll be cleaning up all this confetti. Congratulations. Your Angular cipher is now ready to decode and share secret messages. Have a message for the Angular team? Tag us on social media at Angular so we can decode it. You now have three new reactive primitives in your Angular toolbox to simplify your development and build faster apps by default. We're excited to see what you'll build using Angular Signals. NG update to v16 for Angular Signals in developer preview today. And learn more at all the links in the description box. Thank you.